In the second set of notes on section 5.2, we'll be focusing on some application problems as well as one proof example. For the first problem, we want to find the value of x so that m is parallel to n. So the first thing I'd like you to do is look at these two angles that we have here, which are represented by some expressions. And I want you to think about these two angles, yellow and blue angles. What types of angles are they? And this goes back to chapter 4. You should recognize that those angles are alternate exterior angles. And if we look back at our theorems that we wrote down in the first part of the notes, we would need those alternate exterior angles to be congruent in order to get parallel lines. So what we want to do is set those two expressions equal to each other and solve for x. We get that x has a value of 2. So if we substitute 2 back into the expressions, for x, we end up getting that each angle has a measure of 20 degrees, making those two alternate exterior angles congruent and therefore giving us parallel lines. For number 6, let's take a look at these two angles and let's decide what types of angles they are. The yellow and blue angles here are both located on the interior portion and they're on the same side of the transversal. So these are interior angles on the same side or we can say same side interior angles. If we look back at our theorems, we see that these interior angles on the same side of the transversal must be supplementary in order for us to get parallel lines. So it's a little different here. So you do have to have those different angle relationships memorized. So for this one, we are not going to set the expressions equal to each other, but rather we are going to add them up and set them equal to 180 degrees. When we do that, we get that x is 17. And if we substitute that back in to our expressions, we get that our blue angle has a measure of 106 degrees and our yellow angle has a measure of 74 degrees, which means that those angles are supplementary. For the proof example, I'd like you to fill in the tick marks. And now, let's think about what we want to prove. We want those two lines, blue ones, to be parallel in the end. Well, in order for us to get parallel lines, we need some angles to be congruent. So I just highlighted our yellow line there. That's our transversal. So if we could get those two red angles congruent, those corresponding angles congruent, that would result in those two blue lines being parallel. So I think we could do that by proving the triangles congruent. So let's go ahead and write in our given information. The first given gives us a pair of congruent sides within the triangle, while the second given gives us sides that are too big for the triangle, which means we have to use the subtraction property and subtract off that same segment, RS, from our congruent segments. That would then give us two smaller segments, OR and SP congruent, which then gives us another pair of congruent sides within the triangle. For our third given, CO is congruent to NS, that gives us another pair of congruent sides, which then allows us to say that those two triangles, COR and triangle NSP, are congruent by side, side, side. We mentioned our first pair of congruent sides in step one, our second pair in step three, and our third pair in step four. Now, in order for us to get parallel lines, we have to use CPCTC on those angles. If we can say that those corresponding angles, angles 1 and 2, are congruent, then we can say that the lines are parallel. So we use CPCTC to say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And finally, since those corresponding angles are congruent, that means that we have parallel lines as a result. Our reason would be one of the new theorems from earlier today in this first part of the notes, which states that if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel.